whole time, the whole thing was shadowing us right behind us. And moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, no man. And then this thing walks across the woods, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and black thing is all I can TV exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch DTV for today's date, September 27th, 2020. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective, Steve Coles, along with my co-host, the man right down there, Mr. Chris Bennett. Hello. How are you, Chris? Steve, how are you doing, my man? We're doing good in Kentucky. It's starting to cool off at night. It's still a little warm, though, but, <laughs> but it's starting to cool off. I think, you know, fall is just around the corner. It won't be long. Yeah, just a How's little everything? bit. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, the the uh, the leaves are changing. Uh, I just noticed that today. I'm like, wow, the leaves really turned really quick because last week there was all green. Now it's all yeah. these different shades. Um and what else? Uh, uh, the the weather. What a you know, it got up to seventy six today. It got it was like really warm today. So yeah. uh, eventually, by the end of the week, we're going to be back to seasonal temperatures, which I'm all for anyway. And uh, let's do our, our shout outs to our, our uh, folks oh, tonight. Yeah, uh, we got uh, Jimmy Trick. Hello, Jimmy Frank. Good Jimmy. to see you, Frank. Frank. John. Hello, John. Oh, John. Love the logo. Diane. Uh, that's Diane. Jimmy. And Miss, Mrs. Trick. How are you? Welcome. Of course, the infamous Charlie Wonton is in the house. Hello, Dad. Donald, good to see you, Donald. We'll be catching up with you real soon. Hey, Did get your email, and uh, we're, we're, we're still trying to rattle our peas in our head to see what time we can get up to see you. And, of course, we got Jeff Stewart in there. There he is. Yeah. And, uh, yeah a guest of our show at times. And uh, I, I got to say, uh, it's been quite an interesting week in the Bigfooting world. Yeah. Uh, and Dave Winter just popped in. Hello, David. Dave, um, I Welcome. tell you, it's uh, been a been a very up. Uh, and we got uh, another listener, new listener, LJ from Ohio. Hello, good to see Hi, you LJ. on the show. Welcome. Yep, uh, always welcoming new folks to the show every week. Uh, yeah. A bunch of ton of new subscribers this week. The last couple of weeks, we've gotten quite a score up there. Um, good deal. So, but uh, I'll tell you, uh, last week was a very interesting week. Uh, 
in the squatching world, especially on Facebook. If anybody's been, uh, um, and of course we uh, also, this guy just slid right in tack. Hello, Michael. And I uh, ho- hope you're feeling better, brother. Um, but if anybody's been following the, these things, and I got involved in a couple of conversations and, uh, Haskell Hart, Dr. Hart, who was on a show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And just so you know, I do have the book now. Oh, cool. And, uh, you know, I, I've gone through most of the book. It's not, it's not an easy read. It's, it's very technical, but it's very complete. I mean, if you read right. it, take your time, you can understand it. But, um, so Dr. Hart was posting about his book in different places. Now that he's got the edition fixed from that, that title page flaw. And, um, he started getting attacked. <laughs> hmm. Um, uh, he started getting attacked, which was really, really, you know, sad. You know, people saying, you know, uh, and and uh, one of the people that attacked him was Igor Bertsev, hmm. uh, the uh, the Russian scientist who right. who uh, <laughs> spent a few weeks, whatever, on the, the Carter farm. Didn't yeah, he see lived anything. With, yeah, he didn't lived see with anything. Carter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see anything, but he believes her. He believes her. So, you know, he's going to defend her because he believes her. Nothing scientific. Um, you know, Bertheff, who called himself a doctor in certain places, or people call them doctor when he's just yeah. a master of history, doesn't even have a, a an animal-type degree, zoology, anthropology, archaeology, any of that. None of that. He's a history, oh. history MA. Um, and, uh, yeah, and Bertheff flat out said well you know what you know he's saying this man is horrible he's trying to say sasquatch doesn't exist no not at all read the book he doesn't say that at all and Bertsev's reply was well i'm not going to read it it's trash what what kind well, of scientist are you to me you well, just <laughs> negated yourself as being a scientist you're yeah. going to sit there and, and, and lie about a book lie yeah hadn't even and read you know, it and, and you know what here's here here's the problem Maybe it's a cultural thing because mm. he's from Russia, but he doesn't get the cover. He goes, yeah. well, of course he's saying it's not a Bigfoot. Why put the X on Patty? Well, <laughs> no, that's why he put the X on a Bigfoot yeah. and it, because it wasn't a Bigfoot and a check on the bear and the dog. Right. You know? So yeah, yeah it's kind of a, I understood the cover. It would have been my choice. No, but right. Hey, it's Dr. Hart's book. So whatever I understood it. Um, uh, you know, uh, but it's, it's not a statement about Patty at all, <laughs> right? And, 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 and I don't know if he culturally just doesn't get it. And I tried to explain to him, it's just a metaphor. No, it's not. Okay, well, I've read the book and interviewed Dr. Hart for a couple hours and talked to him, so I I know for a fact he's not trying to. And then there's the, the people in that group that's all oh, well, Dr. Hart's just working for the government, too, and it, it just exactly like he said, yeah, so it, it's pretty sad that when somebody supposedly was uh, an academic is really not an academic. Well, that's the thing, Dr. Hart, he's supposed to be working for the government and he's actually a Bigfoot witness. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And I'm sorry. That that don't work. His PhD from Harvard beats out, you know, from Harvard. Yes. Beats out, you know, a master's degree from, you know, mother Russia or whoever it was. Sorry. I, I hate to be that blunt. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and there's nothing wrong with with education and everything. Not but, at all. You know, but if you you get in Harvard, man, uh, you know they don't take you just anybody. Right, you got to be a smart a smart. Cookie. Right. Correct. Yeah. Not that way. That was object number one uh, on my list today, and uh, you know the the other thing is, um, you know, and I didn't clip the post because I didn't want to expose. Well, I I could have blacked it, you know, but I didn't have time to do this. But there was another person on one of these chats. And, uh, hey, Nani, what's going on? Guess who walked in, Nani? Nani, welcome. <laughs> what's happening? Um, one of, uh, oh, she did. She, she said, I missed you guys. But first she says, hey, Nani's in the house. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the, one of the things that, that, you know, and this is the kind of ilk at Spurs. There was a woman that got on there and said, "Well, you know, it's Bigfoot. You know, they're they're from a they they're from an interdimension, and their name is blah blah blah, and they're being prose- persecuted, and they were slaves." And like, what the hell? Uh, yeah, they, you know. So that got me on yet another tangent, like going, "Hmm, 
this is very interesting behavior. And then just by chance, just by chance, two other things happen. Two, two, mm -hmm. two. And, and the first thing is, is our old friend Kat Hansen decided to emerge from her self-isolation. Oh. And the other thing is I caught a documentary, which I've, I've seen before, but I, it's been a while since I've seen it. I just wanted to watch it. Yeah. And they made a comment in it, and I'm going, huh, let me, let me look at this. Hmm. And the documentary I watched was The Woman That Was Not There. And it was about a woman named Tanya Head, no pun intended, <laughs> um, who uh, was a uh, September 11th survivor. Hmm. Claimed that she was on the 100th floor, I believe, of the second tower. Um, yeah. uh, there was a, a young man uh, by the name of Crowder who who uh, was known as the man in the red bandana because he saved a bunch of people. He claims she claims that, you know, he he kind of shook her and said, listen, you, you got to keep awake. And thanks to him, she got out of the tower and a fireman got there and picked her up and carried her. And then when the towers collapsed, the, the firefighter, you know, put her under the truck real quickly and covered it up while the towers collapsed. So they didn't get buried in debris. Right. And then she went wow. to the hospital. She had a, she had a really badly lacerated arm and the arm had to get attached, reattached. And, and, uh, there was burns and, uh, um, um, so then she came out and she was trying to cope. She lost a, a she said she lost her fiance named Dave and, you know, they kept his last name out of the whole thing, but she had a fiance named Dave. Yeah. Uh, who had died um, as a result of the attack. He was in the building too. And she said, you know, I, I was working for Merrill Lynch in this special think tank. And we, you know, we assigned to a, the world trade center office up there to talk about, you know, what we're going to do it, you know, to move Merrill Lynch ahead and whatnot. <laughs> so she starts going through uh, trying to cope and she finds this, Yahoo chat group. Uh, of course, this is, you know, September, you know, this is 2003, 2002, 2003. Right. Finds this chat group. Eventually, she she gets together with the head of the chat group, and they co-found uh, a 9-11 a survivors organization for people that were trapped inside. And and they do all this stuff, and they, they, they you know, you know she uh, they started to do a documentary of her on her in 2006, and yeah. she was showing how she, you know, every year since she met her fiancé when he stole her cab, you know, he, she, every year, every year she puts the cab in the reflecting pole. Oh yeah. Right. That's, that's nice. So, yep. So she gets to meet, uh, mayor Blumberg and, and at the time the assembly speaker who's, uh, who's now in jail, uh, Sheldon silver and former mayor, uh, Rudy Giuliani and governor George Pataki at the time <laughs> at, at one of the, at the 2006, uh, 2007, uh, I'm sorry, 2007, uh, survivors thing. Yeah. And, um, reporters want to talk to her, but she goes into a panic attack, doesn't want to talk to the reporters. So then the New York times wants to run a story on her, given her, uh, incredible, incredible. And, uh, uh let me stop. Hello, Ed. And hello. Hi, Ed. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Um, uh, so she, she, you know, so they want to do an article on her. Um, but then she's kind of ducking the interview. Mm. So they asked, you know, basically, well, can, can you confirm who your, your fiance was? Okay. Can you, uh, can you confirm who you were working for? And, you know, she was refusing to answer any of these questions. And all the people around her were saying, you know, we understand we, you know, hey, listen, she doesn't want to talk, you know, but they would go back and go, Tanya, why, why don't you just say it? Why don't you just tell him, give him something? Yeah. You know, what was the name of the firefighter that dragged you out? You know, right. uh, what hospital did you stay at? Hmm. Turns out she lied about the whole thing. Oh, my God. Everything was 100% lie. Oh, oh, man. In two thousand in two in two thousand two, or actually in two thousand September two thousand eleven, right? She was in school in Spain because her real name was Alicia Estebe, and she was in school in Spain getting her master's degree, which she got in two thousand two. Oh. 
and then she moved to the United States. And oh. she never took money. Wow. And she she never did it for any real greed purpose at all. People were like, well, no, she never she never signed any documents. She'd always let the board sign it. She never handled the money. She never took any money. No money ever went missing from us. She did, you know, when she was doing a fundraiser, she would do the fundraiser. Man. But it turns out everything she had built up to that point was a lie. Oh, my goodness. So, wow. Yeah, and, and she did nothing illegal. That, that was the thing about it. They couldn't arrest her. They could do, they were, she did nothing illegal. And, of course, when they confronted her, she disappeared. Gone. And then in 2000, and this was 2007, in 2008, late 2008, they got, the, the foundation got an email that she had committed suicide. But then oh. in 2011, she was spotted again in New York City. Oh. So. Oh, man. So uh, this got me to thinking. Yeah. You know, and, and then they talked about what causes that. And that caught me, that caught me thinking, you know. Holy, it was like the Zen realization. I wasn't watching this for any any purpose but just self enjoying, you know, just enjoying the right the, the amazement. And then it just hit me like a, a ton of bricks. Boom. Well, Chris, don't we know some people like that? <laughs> <laughs> don't we know some people like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, you got a whole hall full of them over there. <laughs> and er Eric. Turned around and said, looks like Todd Standing has gone radio silent. Well, I don't know about that just yet. Because I, I actually thought he cut a video last week, but it might have been an older one. But uh, we'll, we'll get into the who's who in what's what. Because as people, uh, like, like people have, and we have the greatest, greatest folks on this uh, as an audience. So and people who follow this show every week, they know. They, they understand where we've been. We did a show... Um, uh, many, many months ago. Of course, this is show number 41. 41. This is our 40, 41st episode on Squash DTV since we've been on the new platform. It don't seem like it's been that many. Ah, it's that many. <laughs> um, oh, I was thinking like about probably about 15, you know. Must have been having a lot of fun. Too much. You know, and what people don't understand is that Chris and I don't wear pants on the show. Where you we, uh, know, the cameras are not. You know, the only problem is, <laughs> the only problem is, I have a leather chair, so when I get up <laughs> after doing a two-hour show, I tend to stick. Now I'm just. <laughs> oh, that's gross, man. <laughs> you know, I get. Up. No. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, I got. Hey, we, we, we always have I've, a little fun. We I've got those. shorts on, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not no, wearing I, pants. I'm wearing shorts. So. I have jeans. But I'm not going to show you my white legs. I'm going to stay seated. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh... <clears throat> so anyway, uh, so it got me thinking, wow. <clears throat> so I started looking at the condition. Yeah. And I found the prime candidate who just happened to come out of retirement a few days ago. Who we thought we had battered her back with retirement. So we're just going to have to put those nails back in the coffin again. I suppose. Going to revisit a few. Uh, and I, and I got I to gotta watch my wording here because. Right. Um, <laughs> and then he goes, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, um, no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no, Eric. No. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> Are you kidding? People, people pay me to keep my clothes on. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know, my, my ex-wife, she used to be afraid of the dark. She saw me naked. She was, she became afraid of the light. So anyway, um, I may have used that joke once oh, or twice man. before though. Um, but anyway, uh, we, we've talked about this before. We've talked about this person before, I think on this show, I'm not even quite sure. Um, because like I said, when we switched over to TV and radio, I'm not quite sure what, what stuff we covered. We well, do a show yeah. like this for this we were looking to, we were yeah. looking at pictures or something, you know, and comparing. Well, I, I, I gotta announce this too. September twenty hmm. first, twenty twenty one. Or sorry, September twenty fourth, twenty twenty one. We are gonna have a you we're gonna have a show whether it's on a Sunday or not. Because that marks the 15-year anniversary of Squatch Detective Radio, Squatch Detective TV. 
Oh, okay. 15 years. Wow. Oh, that makes me so, feel old. Some of our listeners aren't that old. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, and Gl lo glad love having them too. Uh, Ken, uh, the YouTubers are getting fresh today. Yeah, me, <laughs> me neither, Tack. You know, no, no, no. Uh, I can't even imagine me wearing Daisy Dukes. No, 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 no. Old man legs and Daisy Dukes. <laughs> well, you know, I, I saw this 340 pound guy, and he was wearing shorts from that store. What what is it called? Lululemon. <laughs> yeah, he bent over, and I saw his Lulu and two lemons. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> I got to mute it. <laughs> you see the power of comedy. I have now. If only I could do that to somebody like the person we're going to talk about. Oh. You all right? Oh no. Uh, <laughs> okay, where were we? Okay. So let's get into our presentation of the night because this person mm. came out of nowhere, but now we're going to look at it a little more in depth mm. now that we know what we know um, or what you're going to know. And I just got to find where it went. Ah, sorry. <laughs> buttons kind of now at one point I am going to have to, uh, to change up on the, uh, on the uh, on the audio bit because there is a couple of videos I, I it built into this that we need to play but anyway okay. why some hoaxers lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie <laughs> so the, the person we're going to look at tonight is cat hansen aka katuna hansen katuna oh, yeah. hansen she's actually from connecticut and if you look at those pictures on the bottom those are the pictures she used to use on a lot of her profiles and stuff like that. And what oh. really irks me is she always claimed to be, well, I'm Choctaw. Although she says she's something in Choctaw language that turns out when I actually went to the Choctaw English dictionary, it didn't exist. Oh. And I spelled it just like she did. Well, so this I reminds said, me of something. Couldn't she be called Cat Fisher Hanson? Well, Look at those Cat photos. Fish, yeah. Catfish yeah. Hanson, yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, one of them is in Native American garb, and she used to use that. And again, if you think about the psychology of that, if you use that picture and say, Oh, I'm Choctaw, and I have this relationship with these Bigfoot, and you know, she's from the Southwest, and I went to Brigham Young University, and she's actually from Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut. I'm gonna say which city, <laughs> but she's from Connecticut. Wow. Trust me on that, because there's only one Cat Hansen in the entire country, and Cat is short for Katona or Katuna or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, okay. and, and the funny thing is, is the, the person down here and uh, is actually a singer in uh, the same part of Europe, uh, you know, the old Eastern European, you know, the the uh, the Bulgarias and the Hungries and the and yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Romania, those areas. I'm not, I'm not quite sure because I've done this research a while ago, but I think she's like a Hungarian or a Bulgarian singer. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess where this name originates from? Oh, really? <laughs> Bulgaria <laughs> or, or Hungary yeah. or Romania, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Rick. Um, so, yeah. So, here she is using a singer's name. So, it all matches up <laughs> because this person goes right there. You know, from, right. and look at the name, how she spelled cat, right? So, yeah. it, you know, undoubtedly only one person in the entire country with that name. And guess where she lives? Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> so all her little stories already, you're starting to stink. Oh, um, man. So now, I just want to make sure we're there. So uh, about a week ago, uh, she wrote, what I have discovered about, this is what she writes, what I have discovered about the Bigfoot world. Over the years, I've discovered that this group of people are either very open-minded or extremely closed-minded. Well, you know, it's amazing how open-minded we can be. But when you throw us hoaxes, we get closed-minded pretty fast. Um, there seems to be no middle of the ground or leeway given. Well, there is, just not for hoaxers. <laughs> Uh, you either hoaxed or you didn't. <laughs> right. And if we can't prove it, we, we put it aside and give you the benefit of the doubt around here. Right. Researchers attack each other and each other's work to the point where def defamation of character and income are affected. What? 
What? Income is effect? Yeah. See, delusional, delusional that everybody's making money off of this. So when you, when somebody attacks me, I lose money. They just want to give the appearance that when they get attacked, they're losing money. They're really not. Okay. This is the only group of experts that I ever have come across who literally go out of their way, will travel hundreds of miles to another researcher's site just to upset and cause chaos. So that way they can prove to themselves and their so-called fans that nothing is coming out of this research camp. Well, I don't know about that, but, uh, hmm. you know, <laughs> uh, this is active stalking and verbal abuse as well as sometimes property damage. Really? Oh, well, you're from Connecticut. So don't tell me somebody's coming out to your special place in New Mexico. <laughs> um, but the majority of Bigfoot world will hop onto researchers bandwagon and decide to do a form of character assassination. Huh. Right. Uh, on said researcher who is being investigated with no proof or and it says odd, but I mean, with no proof. I love that because we have a very high standard on this show. Don't we, Chris? Oh yeah. Gold standard, baby. <laughs> I remember years ago I was getting beat up for giving Biscardi yeah. the benefit of the doubt because I didn't have any proof in my hand that he did. Right. 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 Yeah. Thank you, David. Um, so, uh, I myself have been attacked over and over for the last 15 and a half years. And the proof that they have against me is made up and falsified. Others have gone in defense up, have uh, gone in defense of my name and literally proven that what they have come up, used is falsified and made up. And still I am told I'm that I must prove my innocence. Nobody has ever asked you to prove your innocence because you're guilty as hell. There is no leeway here. Ain't no, no way. Show. Ain't no, there ain't no way. There. Right. There ain't no way. And we're going to show all that. We're going to show that, yeah. hey, nothing's made up here. And, no. and, and that's why when I see stuff that she puts out, I kind of chuckle at it. <laughs> okay. And then she starts using the rape card again. I know it's a bit extreme, but I'm going to use the example of telling a rape victim they have no right to prove they were raped. That's bullshit. Pardon my French. That's bullshit. And you're a liar. And, you, and now you're, you're pulling the rape card? Really? Really? No, no, no. When you, when you, when you're a, when you're a proven liar, you're a liar. Okay, and that's the other thing. Her claims about oh, uh, you know, I've gotten death claims. I've been getting death threats by whom? Not by me. That's for sure. Not for sure. Nobody else. Everybody laughs at her. No, nobody I know wants to hurt her. No. Now there was a couple of people in the Bigfoot world that I know people wanted to hurt. <coughs> Rick Dyer, <coughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> And of course, I, I I am always saying that I don't hate anybody really. Unless no, you're no, no, we love. Hey, I don't, I don't, we, we love everybody. You know, <laughs> don't hate nobody. But you know, if you're hoping, we're gonna we're gonna call you out, and, and that's, that's just the way it is. But I'll tell you, I'm agitated about this woman. I'm agitated about this woman because she's trying to. You can see how this is what we call manipulation. Mm. Okay. You can see what a sick control freak type of person she is because when she has these all these stories, she disappears. Then when she comes back, she tries to manipulate the people that still believe her. That still believe her. They're trying to manip. She's trying to manipulate them by using words like cyber terrorism in the Bigfoot world from right. the Bigfoot world. Yeah, you know, death threats, false claims, stalkers, rape. She's used all these words in this thing. All of them. So I call bullshit. The only stalker is you. The only liar is you, Cat Hansen. I'm going to say that. And we're going to see why in a minute. See, that is what irritates me. Because then it causes people to do stupid shit. Pardon my French. Like this. So the first round we had was the, from this, this idiot that follows her. Named Link Paul. Who said, I'm not a follower of Cat Lie number one. She's a personal friend who I've known for some years now. Um, I protect her and her clan. Okay. Uh, I don't make threats, nor have I made any yet. Made any yet. Let's agree to be on lookout for such people. And he goes on to say, you know, about violence. Yeah, because people that have disagreements have no place in, you know, basically violence on people because of disagreements have no place in this business. Do you agree? I agree. Violence. And this is my exact reply. I agree. Violence has no place 
in any debate, argument, or viewpoint. Violence has no place at all. That's right. I can laugh. I can stay. I can go, <laughs> right? But you see, little story maker here, and we're going to explain why. Um, story maker has to make up more stories. I'm getting death threats. <laughs> You know, and I want to bring up the rape card. You know, I'm going to say this is cyber terrorism. And that's exactly right. The next view point. So then we have, okay, apology accepted. Uh, he goes, okay, so let's agree to be on the lookout. So then a week later, right? A week later, a friend sends me this comment from her chat page between Jason Boone, a guy by the name of Jason Boone, Kat Hansen, and, and this guy Link. And Jason's, oh my and Jason's comment is, you want me to go shoot him? I got lots of guns. It's kind of a requirement for growing up here in the rural south. Huh. Okay, so who's cyber terrorism here? Who's making death threats here? Kat Hansen's response, you crack me up. My son's first response to LOL. And Jason Boone goes, Kat Hansen, hey, sometimes people have it coming. Wink. Right? Kat wow. Hansen agreed. Wow. <laughs> right? And Link Paul, the guy who's saying to be on the lookout for these very people, right. said it's been a long time coming. Wow. <laughs> right. So these are the crackpots. Dang. These are the real crackpots, folks. So you need to avoid these people like the plague. There it is in black and white for you. You know, <laughs> you want me to shoot them? My first son's response to LOL. There's no wow. laughing about violence. In fact, your 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 little Man. pit bull went after me to say that I was and tried to accuse me of of making death threats against her when I never even talked to the woman. Wow. Man. So uh, this is the other thing too. Now this is uh, a response under her her little tale of woe with the rape and everything like that every la nasty lie manufactured and manipulated film photo reports defamatory articles podcasts and gossip by these filthy hateful degenerates have all been debunked and proven to be 100 percent false against cat well i can have a little hate against link because link is a liar he wow. is two-faced and guess what <gasps> you're a hoaxer too because that's a bold-faced lie. When you said they've all been debunked again and proven to be 100% false, I'd like to see that proof. like to see that proof. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go to proof right here. Memory oh, lane. The memory lane. Let's go down memory lane. So we have up here in the right-hand corner, going right over here, we have a picture she posted and made a comment. This is Big Red. Original photo with his clan in the background. Mm. Right, and wow. if you look, this is actually the Sean Bannon hoax that was pulled off in uh, 2008. Yeah, right in 2008. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's been 100 percent proven that that's incorrect. Exactly. Wrong. Wow. <laughs> just, just, just Google it, people, or are you sheeple. <laughs> Right? Oh, so completely, man. and of course, since you wanted to invoke the the Jerry Springer rule, I've decided to bring in a few of my friends. There's Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve. Steve. <clears throat> Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh. So, whoop. Yeah, you know, I, I brought Vinny in earlier. <laughs> um, so now we have this one, which was her YouTube video, episode eight, Sasquatch Eyes, uploaded by Cat Hansen, August. 30th, 2017. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to mute us for a second. I'm going to play that little clip, which is her voice. And of course, this is fair use because we're reporting on this. So everybody just stay tuned. Here we go. People need to understand the differences between these guys. Okay. It's very important that people don't make the mistake of mixing them up. Okay. Um, the brown-eyed ones look just like my picture of Bradis that I have on here. Um, you and there you go. There's her voice in her own voice saying, here's the picture of Bradis that I have here. Mm. And Bradis was, you know, the her one of her Bigfoot. 
one of her Bigfoot friends. Yeah. And what we're going to do is I'm not going to play the sound on this video, but the video you see playing in the upper corner there yeah. is the actual rescue of the baby gorilla Amani. And there's a screen cap from it. And as you can see, this yeah. is all the same. Yeah. Uh, I think the aspect ratio has changed a little bit. It's been stretched. It's yeah. been stretched yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But you yeah. can see it's the same vegetation. Exactly. Right. And this video did come out a few years before the Bratis one. Right. Right. So there you have it. And then here's the, this is Africa. I'm kind of trying to move this along to where they actually rescue the gorilla. And you actually see, it's very quick. It's like just a screen cap. There it is. So there they are going into the bush. And yeah. at that point, they, they get a screen capture out of whatever that is somehow. But they do. And you can yeah. even see, there's the foliage all right there. There it is right yeah. there. Yeah. There's the foliage. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Leaves, right. everything. Right. Yeah. So there you, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, this is all fabricated. You can just find it on YouTube. Well, you know, the people, I mean, in, in her mind, she pulled off such a great hoax there that nobody could ever prove it was, uh, you know, wasn't real. And, uh, of course, you just totally blew that out of the water, you know. I mean, you don't even have to look at the, the, the baby gorilla's face. You can see the leaves and the foliage all around it. It matches up exactly. This leaf mm. is this long, you know. The one that she stretched is a little longer right next to it, you know. Right. And then, and then you know, she's such a, a, a hypocrite. Um, <clears throat> in this last picture that I debunked, and, and that's all I needed was three. I don't need to go and debunk every single thing she does. Right. And all I need is here. Here's three things. She had the actual gall to write, Cat Hansen, copyright 2008. It's not her picture. <laughs> That's not her picture. Uh, she and, needs to get and, hit up and on I a copyright at that, And then all of a sudden I realized, well, it seems awfully green, like there's a filter on it. So I removed, I, I adjusted, I did an autocorrect on, on the thing. Yeah. And then a, a Twitter, um, a Twitter uh, uh, user wrote me and said, I think this picture's flipped. And, you know, because I was looking, I go, that's kind of weird. And then all of a sudden I went, wait a minute, it is flipped. And what it shows is this baby gorilla. Right. On, on, as you see on the right-hand side of the screen, there's the baby gorilla with the hand looking out. Yeah. And all she did was flip it and, you know, some pareidolia takes effect of the bugs or whatever the, the dirt is on around the ear. Yeah. Right, and the paradox takes over, and it's a Bigfoot peeking around the tree, and she had the nerve to actually post that and say it was hers. So, Link Paul, how has this been proven that these are all doctored and fake? How? <laughs> you well, know. I mean, well, you, you you can look at it this way. I mean, the photos that she has posted have been doctored and are fake because she is stolen other people's photos and then doctored them up and used them as hers, presented so them I, as hers. Yeah. So I even have a more devious, devious claim. Uh, Link Paul has never posted a picture of himself. Hmm. Link Paul, obviously is not his real name. Right. Some kind of pseudonym. Of course not. Right. Course not. Um, given the facts of what Link Paul has said, that the, the oh, it's been 100% proven, blah, 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 blah. I believe Link Paul is Cat Hansen. Hmm. I believe they're one and the same. And that's just a fake account for Cat Hansen. So, hmm. sock puppet. Sock hmm. puppet. Yeah. Exactly. Because, you know, who's the one who claims I, I'm not, a, you know, why would he claim I'm not a follower of hers? I'm not a fan of hers, exactly. but I've known her for years. Lie. Right. That's I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to talk about violence. Lie. Mm. You know, so it, it, it just seems like too coordinated. She talks about getting death threats. Next thing you know, he's going after me. She doesn't like the fact that I debunked her and debunked her, you know, uh, home runs right. on each, every, right. all three of the examples I've shown are home runs. And on each the examples, there's her little print on there that says that. Anybody can go back to the web and look and look at her channel and see the Braddis video and then yeah. look at the video I just showed you tonight. Right. 
Just Google search baby gorilla Amani, A M A N I, rescue. These, these are totally busted. It's a home run, Steve, out of the park. There ain't no going back. <laughs> so I'm not going to get into all the the, the hash baggery that, that goes no. on with the rest no. of her. But let's let's just take a look at this. I uh, know this time we got Maury there. Hey, there's Maury. <laughs> Maury. Um, but we I wanted to look at uh uh <laughs> fairly one time. Hey Steve, you should think about becoming private investigator. Well, guess what? <laughs> Hence the reason why I know she lived in <laughs> Connecticut. Yeah. Hence, I knew she was in her 60s before those pictures were even released. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I know many secrets sometimes. You should look into that, Steve. You know, yeah. I think a private investigator would, you know, be interesting. Uh, I left it in the car. <laughs> um, Don't worry, I've seen it. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, so anybody, and yes, uh, private's investigator. No, not quite. <laughs> um, so anyway, if you look at those three uh, pieces of, uh, yeah, you know, you look at those three pieces of, of evidence that, that shown right there. One, yeah. two, three. You know, you know, she is not being so anyway, she claims to be an archaeologist. She's got a BS in archaeology in uh, from Brigham Young University. Uh, and apparently it looks like uh, BS. No, actually, uh, we, we showed at the beginning her actual real name. is Katuna Hanson. Mm hmm. Yeah. And uh, as we explained earlier, too, that uh, this particular person is the same kind of ethnic background that this name comes from, <laughs> right. which is kind of funny. Um, right. So, uh, but anyway, getting back to this, it, it turns out that I looked at the Brigham Young University, went to their alumni directory, right. and there's no Hansons. That, these are all the archaeology degrees they've ever given out, just right. two, and BAs. Two, um, only these, two. Yeah, these are all the Hansons that have... Uh, gotten degrees. There's a couple of Kims and Spanish agriculture management. Yeah. Uh, the, I don't know. This one's got a B in uh, a degree in B. Nineteen. Uh, all right. Or maybe she got a B minus. I don't know. But and then we have, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, the only one that really was a Kimberly Hansen who uh, is from Salt Lake City. Uh, Pre medical credential zoology. Uh, so these are the years they, they got their degrees and where they live, where they reside now. Right. So, so yeah, so there was no alumni, uh, you know, there was no name in the alumni directory, uh, under Cat Hansen or Katuna Hansen. Right. Uh, so I used both names. So, uh, she does have her BS degree. Sure does. She's got her BS degree. So anyway, getting into what, <laughs> exactly causes um a a person uh, to do stuff is a is a psychological term called pseudologica fantastica and that was something that tanya head aka uh alicia estebe who did the 9-11 hoax that's what she was suffering right, with these, these yeah. things and if we let, let's take a look at it normal lying is uh externally motivated situationally determined example financial gain avoiding punishment or responsibility and they mm. give an example if i've never had a relationship with that person i never stole your wallet however pseudological fantastica has internally motivated psychologically derived example self-esteem fa fantasy fulfilling um <laughs> <laughs> you can tune a piano, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> bravo, Mr. Swan. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the reason why she just wants to be called cat. <laughs> can tune a piano. Yeah. Tune a piano. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, quit. My face is hurting already. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. All right. Let's get back to this. Okay. <laughs> so, so normal, li- li- normal so lying is uh, normal I'm lying sorry. is I didn't do it. Okay. I didn't do it. I didn't take I didn't your do wallet. It. I, I, uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't bang the waitress in the parking lot. None of that. You know, that's all. You know, that's right. But you go to Psychological Fantastica, uh, okay. internally motivated and psychologically derived uh, examples, right. self esteem fantasy. I hardly have time to establish friendships. Being a CEO, I work 80 hours a week for that big time corporation and spend the rest of my time volunteering overseas in the orphanages. Exactly. You know, here's Katuna. Oh, well, wow. my Sasquatches, I have such a relationship with them. Of course. <laughs> You know, it's exactly that. Um, uh, and again, Pseudologic Fantastica is characterized by the creation of eloquent and interesting stories, sometimes bordering on the fantastic. They are told to impress others. These yeah. stories may seem just to be on the verge of believability and often involve the subject assuming important and heroic roles or as the victim to gain sympathy. Ah. Mm. Ah, full circle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm being cyber threatened. Yeah. Um, no, you just have a, a very bad, right? Subjects react to questions or doubts with ad hoc elaborations in order to satisfy the listener. Thus, new lies are needed to supplement the old. And patients, uh, uh, patients or subjects start to believe their own deceptions. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm, you yeah. actually start believing, yeah. oh, I did have these. Now, um. So, wow. and then oh. the other thing is at times they disappear for a time when confronted or self isolate. Ah. It's funny, we've seen that from Mr. Standing too. Uh, at times he's disappeared. Uh, although I'm not so sure. I mean, he did disappear after the blinky thing for actually a while. We didn't see yeah. him for, uh, you know, a good year or so after the blinky thing when that was exposed. Um, got to get out long enough for everybody to forget and then, <laughs> and then you get back in and you got all new people right so rick asks if any of us got in a night investigation at purgatory road i don't know where purgatory road is i've heard certain researchers get in action all the time what do you think of those say they see sasquatches every time they go out well rick i i i i tend to have uh a couple of thoughts on that um uh there's a number uh, you know just for the same reason some people lie about it knowingly just for the uh, the simple fact of pseudologica pseudologia fantastica just for that fact uh and and some people are just so paranoid they think everything is bigfoot i've been out to uh, a, a field with a guy that turns around and we heard a barred owl and he turns around to me and looks at me and says hey that's a bigfoot Imitating a barred owl. I, that ain't no Bigfoot. I mean, that's a barred owl. Ow. Man, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> oh, I am, uh, hello, everyone. Only live stream I allow chat for. Okay. Welcome, OT. Um, I guess. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um... So, so the, you thing about, uh, the thing about the uh, thing about it seemed like it's come. This description has come full circle, Steve. I'm I'm wondering if you you haven't got some sort of a uh, uh, psychology uh, background or something. Well, you know, uh, psychology has kind of been my thing in the field. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, you know, being a forensic interviewer, you do have to know a lot of psychology to talk to people. Yeah. Uh, why they do things and uh, what's going to work against some people, what's not going to work against some people. Um, uh, you know, people with, with pseudology of Fantastica yeah. uh, generally will just keep getting themselves more and more lies. Yeah. And eventually they either shut down or they confess. They say, oh, yeah, yeah you know, uh, you know, or they start to change the story to the truth eventually. Cool. And that's a slow, long process. Um, sociopaths, psychopaths, now forget about it. You're never going to get them. Uh, only the people that have normal rationalization um, or you give them a way of uh, giving them an exit that they can feel is morally yeah. 
Correct. So when I interview somebody for theft or for another type of crime, you always try to sympathize with their point of view of aspect. And you try to come up, uh, you know, there was a whole chapter on rape. And sometimes, you know, as, as crazy as it sounds, when you interview these people, say, listen, I, I understand she was dressed the way she was dressed and it was kind of provocative. And you may, you know, you, you probably felt that, you know, she was showing signs of wanting it. And, and, and then they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They start agreeing and then you can right. tip them to. Right. So yeah, that, that, that's why it was. I, I, she was telling me yes. And then, you know, so uh, the same thing with, with theft, uh, when you talk about theft types of cases, right. you try to get into the uh, into their head about why they may have done it. And listen, you know, uh, you try to lessen the moral implications of, of what they do. Right. And that's how you get them to admit what they're doing. Um, you can't go into somebody and say people think, oh, your friends are going to, oh, let me get the hose out. You know, yeah, that never, never works. Yeah. Um, you know, um. Well, the thing about, you know, on this, this lady that we're talking about right now, I mean, I mean, I don't see what she's getting out of it. Uh, uh, it this is just hoaxing. I mean, we've well, got three, three, three cases. It, that are it, it fits, it fits the Pseudologia Fantastica uh, narrative to a T. Um, and there's an, and the funny thing is, is we see similarities with people who have this ilk of this ilk, do the exact same things. Um, comes to mind, right off the top, is Linda Newton Perry. Yeah. Um, who has, you know, oh, you're lying, you're doing, no, I'm, I'm not lying. You're, you're the one who's lying. Yeah. <laughs> and again, there, there was another case where we've come up with stuff that we actually sent guys to, to meet the team she supposedly says was the ESP team, her team. And they were none of the above. They were from Fort Worth, Texas, not Oregon. Right. right. So the, stock, the stockyards in there. <laughs> yeah, they were uh, Fort Worth stockyards. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's where she probably sniped their pictures off of. Probably. Yeah. Um, so, but we look at you know Cat Hansen, who here's three pictures right here that we've 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 caught her sniping around the internet. So again, we yeah. have this and a little bit of changing of maybe the filter on the picture or stretching of the picture. Stuff like that. Again, stuff we've seen Linda Newton Perry do. Same exact thing. And right. they build these yeah. great, great stories around themselves. And right. Linda Newton Perry still at it, still at it. Although she's getting smarter, she's putting less and less stuff out there. And she does the ESP team, but you know, everybody knows the ESP team is not real. Right. And, you know, how many people she's not making money out of it. Neither is Kat Hansen, really. Yeah, she Kat Hansen has a Patreon page, which she was trying to capitalize on. That was one of the other interesting things, too, is that she was actually trying to sell like one on one things for fifty dollars a month or whatever it was. I forget what the well, uh, was, but, but does does it Miss Perry uh publish some children's books though about Bigfoot? Yeah, but you know how many let's face it, you know, you, you don't get mass advertisement on blogs, really. Well oh, and she uh, writes yeah. children, yeah, it's I guess like that's right. You know, uh, you know, I, you know, what you do is when you get picked up by a publisher that's willing to put you in a in a bookstore and set you up on, you know, a, a 30 big city tour of signing books, then you're making money on books. Yeah. You know, you know, I, you know uh, if um, I mean, uh, you know, they want to do this stuff. I mean, they got to understand they're not furthering uh, the field of Bigfoot. Okay, they're actually setting things back by uh, making up these hoaxes, and uh, oh, well, to them it doesn't care. It doesn't matter. They're they're not about the Bigfoot, right? It's all it's about it, them. It, it's about them feeling yeah. important, feeling heroic, feeling special, feeling, and and you know we've been talking about that for years, but now all of a sudden this name came in front of me due to a documentary about right. Tanya Head, and I'm like going. That's exactly what this is. Pseudologia yeah. Fantastica. Wow. And, uh, you know, I, I really think she should get help. And, yeah. uh, you know, again, you know, these people, when they get attacked, they get angry. Some of them get angry. You know, oh, you know, you know, but then again, she disappeared for a while. She disappeared out of sight for a good six, seven months, eight months, maybe a year. Now she's back. <coughs> Because wow. now she really wants that need, and and how's she doing by building up a narrative of cyberbullying and and comparing it to rape and all this other stuff? Horseshit. Yeah. 
you know, uh, you know what? Uh, name me one thing. What I'm saying is this: is that you've lied to us about this, this, and this. What else can we believe about you? Hey, you man, know? that's that's three strikes right there. And that's three pieces of evidence. Let's talk yeah. about her degree. Yeah, that's four. Let's talk <laughs> about where. Let's talk about where she lives. Yeah, that's five. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. uh, well, three is plenty. About. Three was plenty for me. You know, I, I'm the. You know, like uh, we talked about the uh, Rick Dyer before. You know, oh, well, and I'll I'll say again, I have no ill will against Rick Dyer. He may be a great guy, but he's a hoaxer, <laughs> and that's just a fact. You know, and uh, I wouldn't believe uh, uh, Rick Dyer had seen a Bigfoot. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, if, if the I, world I, was ending tomorrow, you know, <laughs> I, I've arrested, I, I wouldn't believe. You know, you, you know, it's like this. I've arrested a lot of people. Yeah, my life, and and most of the people I arrest, they all they're, they're they're people. They got a story behind them. Yeah, you know. And if people want to get gnarly and and say other things and whatever, have a nice day. Goodbye. Yeah, I mean, right. I, they're not in my life. They really know. Uh, and and the same thing with Cat Hansen. She's really she she's not really in my life. So I really have no hatred. She's not yeah. really you know. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't tell me that I put out lies and deceptions because I will eat you the F alive because that's not what I do. And people know that. Oh. So oh. And my, my suggestion to her is just go away, get some help, go to a psychologist because if you're putting stuff out there and then turning around and saying that, you know, it's been debunked. And of course she's got this guy, which I believe is really her because right. who would say that? Yeah. Who would tell you all these lies have been a hundred percent. No, that's sounding. And I didn't realize yeah. it until just when I started reading, because remember Chris, I had told you in pre-show that I thought this might've been her, right. but I wasn't sure. But now yeah. that I'm reading this, especially the latest one. Yeah. Every nasty lie manufactured manipulator has a hundred percent false. Okay. Who, but her, who but her would have those feelings? True. Anybody with a brain in their head yeah. would take a look at those three previous things and say that. And anybody, and, and he's following her party line 100%. Now, I don't know. I, I've known people that are real good friends with people. And sometimes, even though people go overboard, say, listen, hey, listen, you know what? I, uh, I understand. And, and, and this is, if Link Paul was a real person, I'd say, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with everything she says, but you know, we, we need to, you know, uh, but no, there is a blind following there using the same language, using the same in, uh, intonation, almost the, yeah. uh, the written intonation, uh, the, the flow of it, how, how I should say, uh, I'm really thinking they're the same person. It, it is very, very possible. Because uh, she might have uh, some sock puppet accounts to back herself up, you know. And I'd seen it before on the Bigfoot forums. I mean, uh -huh. some people would come in there. Now, this is years ago. But there would be people come in there and register two or three accounts. And they would sometimes start threads and have conversations with herself. Right. <laughs> And, you know, we started booting people with sock puppets, you know, because of stuff like that. Because, you know, you get some people that come in there that, you know, they're not exactly, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. They're probably pretty crazy. Yep. Uh, but, you know, for whatever whatever reason, and if she's trying to support her own lies, it, it would make sense to me that she would be having sock puppets to come in there and say, oh, yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah, that's, that's right. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I just don't get and, it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and even OT says, uh, pay att attention to linguistics as well. Sign, sign structure tense so it can often be used to figure yeah. out or guess yeah. who is responsible. To agree. I agree. A thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. I, I haven't really had time to do that. But in just reading, I'm wait a minute. That kind of does flow like what she's been writing. It does. You know, um, and, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, and, and it's not like this is my first rodeo with people. No, but now, you know, I remember, I remember back in the battle days. Yeah. When, when Rick Dyer had Frank Kelly on his side and if Frank Kelly said something and you would talk to him saying, well, you know, 
he would pause when you said something that was very contradictory that Dyer said. He would still stick up for him, but he would say, okay, um, I get that. But let's talk about this. This guy, there is nothing like it. It's like the party line, 100%. Right. And to me, to me, unless that's her husband or her son or a family member or somebody getting a little, um, <laughs> I know you want to laugh at that one. Uh, you know, there is no reason to keep that party line like that. Yeah. Uh, well, it has to be somebody that haven't, hasn't seen the evidence. I mean, right. you know. Exactly. And obviously he says, well, I've known her for all these years, but I'm not a fan. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so just to go on with a couple of examples. We talked about oh, oh, good, good. Yes. Yes, got Janice Carter, the story of stories. Uh, you know, Fox coming, knocking on the door, asking for garlic, not powdered, but whole. Garlic. Oh. Garlic, yes. Need fresh. Don't need the oh, other yes, one. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Janice. You wouldn't have to have any gray poupon, would you? <laughs> yes, we're having we're having uh, links tonight. <laughs> well, the the funny thing about the the Janice Carter uh, deal was Igor Burtsev actually went there and lived with her for a while. I don't know now, how now, long. Now we're coming full circle again. Yeah. <laughs> He actually, he lived with her for a while, and he never had a sighting. Although nope. she she could see him every day, but he never had a sighting the whole time he was there. But he still supports. He still believes that. I mean, unless he changed his mind here recently. Uh, at at last count, he still believed that uh, she was having uh, experiences with uh, Bigfoot creatures. Now, I I do want to make. I, I do want to make one comment. Uh, now you, we've talked about that, uh, <laughs> and, and 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 it's really important to me. Uh, one thing I need to stress to people, especially Bigfoot researchers, is that just because somebody may have a a a long uh, a series of of sightings on their property, uh, that is not automatically considered pseudologia fantastica. Remember, this is eloquent. So there's going to be a lot of elaboration to these stories. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be, you know, and, and then they left me the picture behind and then, and then they came knocking at the door and asked me for garlic and, you know, they follow me, you know, to the pond and come around. Now the people that the legit people that have, yeah, I got these things on my property. We see them from time to time. We found this happen. We find this happen. We find that. that's all within reason to me, you know, but when you right. start, Building up, and, and usually this is going to be earmarked with some sort of relationship to the creatures. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, or, or 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 I should say a more uh, elaborate relationship with the creatures. You know, like oh, they came in and they sat with me on the log, and we we had we had herbal tea together and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that's yeah. the kind of stuff that we you know we need to look at. Uh, you know, and, and so keep that in the back of your head. And that's the reason why we do these and education, not only for our audience looking at some of these things, but for researchers too, it's kind of like an evergreen type of thing that we can, um, you know, kind of, uh, uh, understand some of the things that go on. Well, you know, if, 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 if I'm talking to somebody and they tell me that they've had a sighting on their property, you know, we'll talk about it. That's cool. And uh, I'll, I'll be interested in that, and I'll, I'll consider that their area might be a, 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 their area has got some activity. But if I'm talking to somebody and they say, "Oh yeah, I've had a sighting on my property," and every Sunday Bigfoot comes over and eats fried chicken with me at lunchtime, you know, I might ask them if I could come over next Sunday. <laughs> well, I, well, yeah. Well, and um, do you want me to bring the hot sauce? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be over with the hot sauce. <laughs> I bring some KFC, you know. Next thing you know, next thing you know, Fox shows up, knocks <coughs> on the door. He's asking for hot sauce in, in a bottle, not in packets. So. Oh, te Texas Pete. Got to can't be that Louisiana stuff. It's got to be the Texas Pete hot sauce. <laughs> yep. 
but so, uh, yeah, so we yeah. so we, we we have these and there and if you look in, and I'm going to start looking at some of these examples in the future for a, a writing of some sort, uh, yeah. probably on the blog or whatever. I may report back, you right. know, maybe a few months down the road with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a Texas Peter Franks. <laughs> Not quite sure, um, but uh, one of the things I'm gonna I'm gonna look at is these these story buildups because you know I look at I look at some of of Tanya Head's things with her nine eleven uh, um, Oh, David Winter has a Tannis Carter story I can talk about here from many oh. years ago. Yeah, um, yeah, we we would love That's to cool. uh, hear hear that one if you want to just yeah. type in a few cents. You know, obviously, if it's if it's enough if it's enough to take up some time, we'll have you come on the show some point. We'd love to love to hear that. Oh, um, Sean's got a comment too. Crystal has a garlic infused hot sauce. Oh, wow! <laughs> I want to try that, man. <laughs> That might be good. That might be real good. You well, know, next week we're going to have a cooking show. Yeah, sorry, man. I got we got talking about hot sauce for some reason. I don't know where that came from. That but, was for me. Okay, we got talking but about remember, hot sauce. Yeah, yeah. Remember, I, I was talking about the Bigfoot and the, you know, with the chicken. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hot dog gonna show up next yeah, week with yeah. the hot sauce. I uh, I had to add my Texas Pete in it because I love Texas Pete. I'm sorry, I do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I like any hot sauce. Give it to me all. Tabasco, and, uh, French Red Hot. Doesn't matter. Hot sauce is hot. It can, around here, we usually get we get Louisiana hot sauce, or we got Texas Pete. That's about it. What's the other one too? That that'll burn the the. the okay, th thank you, David. That'll work. Uh, I will. Uh, what's the one that burns the skin off your tongue? The. Uh, oh, I don't want none of that. No, uh, no, 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 no. Tabla Tio. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that's made out of uh, those ghost peppers or something. I don't want no part. No, no, of that. they're made with ghost peppers, but it's, it's pretty. It, it's red pepper sauce, but it's mm. smoke will come out of your ears. Eat too much. In fact, you know, I uh, I won't say the pepper so bad that, that at nighttime I had to put a pair of asbestos underwear on so I didn't burn down the bed. <laughs> oh man, uh, I like I like I like hot stuff, but not not too hot. I I don't want to get an ulcer, you know. I, no, no, no. <laughs> you're on this show. What do you mean you're not going to get an ulcer? <laughs> oh, anyway, um, there's some of these people give me an ulcer. <laughs> Bigfoot knocking on doors asking for garlic. Mrs. Sparkle saying that Bigfoot's everywhere in in this little geographical well, area. Okay, now let's. There there is a difference on the Janice Carter deal. Okay. Uh, she didn't put out any uh, photos. No, those were Mary Green's, right? Mary Green had some photos. But anyway, anyway, Janice never put out any photos saying this is Fox or anything like that. So uh, what we have to go by there is just her word of mouth. Okay. And some of the stories that she told were truly incredible. I guess all of them were really <laughs> incredible, but, uh, you know, there's nothing to say that, that she, you know, there's nothing to prove that that didn't happen, but, uh, it's really hard to swallow though. Well, uh, yeah. Whole garlic usually is harder to swallow than powder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 you know, I, I never, I never spent any time really, Knocking her because she was kind of harmless. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think just so. just for the fact that she didn't fake, she didn't really fake anything and put it out there as, "Hey, this is at least not that I can remember." I know Mary Green put some photos out there that were <laughs> to be mildly put controversial. Yeah, they were bushes. Um, but to me, but you know, I, I I looked at them and I couldn't see anything but bushes. But um, then we have you know Linda Newton Perry who put out those pictures and announced it. And as people started watching her going, what's going on? This team out in Oregon and got pictures of a Bigfoot. And uh -huh. she put out that, you know, she put out some fake pictures and that's what 
really yeah. put me her on my radar was when yeah. she started stepping over the line like that see yeah. and, and then you have you know and, and i love the guy to death is c wayne wilson and you know he sees bigfoot everywhere he's always got these blob squatches pictures or it's anubis or it's the yeah. dog man or it's you know whatever the bird man whatever whatever but he's harmless he's yeah. harmless He's not bothering anybody. I, you know, I see no need to. In fact, I have a little fun with him too when I, I see him. But, um, you know, I. But it's the people that want to do harm, and when when people start putting out YouTube channels using recycled pictures or pictures of, you know, le- old hoaxes like the Sean Bannon hoax, um, yeah. and that was called the 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 Beast of the Giant Sequoias. That right. was the actual term that was used way back in the day. And uh, before well, a lot I, of these, before a lot of these people following her, were even in yeah. involved in looking at Bigfoot. That that's the thing I was getting ready to say, Steve. Uh, they get the the newer people that just came in and have not seen this other stuff before, you know, and, and they start following them, right. and uh, they they start you know getting uh, getting them on board, and which we you take somebody that's been in you know the Bigfoot field for a little while. We we start looking at stuff like uh, when they show a, a photo or a video, we can say, "Hey, wait a minute! Uh, I've seen that before. Wait a minute, let me go back and look at this up." You know, so it, it, it's hard. To, you can't fool everybody all the time. You can fool some people, but you can't fool everybody. I don't think yeah. you can fool Steve at all. <laughs> yeah. No, well, everybody's human. Everybody can err. You yeah, know, I, I never, right. I never lose sight of that in any investigation. You never lose sight that you can make a mistake. Yeah, that's why I am. You know, when when I call somebody a hoaxer, when I look at them and say this person is a hoaxer, um, I have the evidence. I, I generally have right. enough to say I can comfortably say that, and I have stuff to back it up. Because right. that's the way I look at it. As an investigator's point uh, standpoint, is that when when I'm done and, and, and I rule somebody a suspect. It's boom. There, there it is. Here um, is the proof. <laughs> I, I remember, you know, I remember the day after the Bigfoot body. Yeah. After that was revealed. And I was the one who revealed it first. I was the one who got on the air and said, it's fake. Yeah. Right. It was my own words that got it out there first. And uh, there was a lot of shit going on behind the scenes there. Yeah. And I didn't have the evidence to say that Biscardi was involved and, and has been, had not been duped. But right. you bet your ass, the minute after that show and the minute I had some freedom, I started getting the ball rolling on that. Right. And eventually, uh, it took me about five months to do it, but then I got the freezer receipt and I got all this other information. Right. And we were able to put the fork in Biscardi for that being involved. Right. That's what it takes. And that was a big investigation. It was nothing small. So it's not going to... Well- you, you, you know, can't you you can't expect somebody just to come out and voice an opinion. I had an opinion, but sometimes opinions can get you in trouble. Yeah. So that's why sometimes I hold back and say, "Well, I really don't, you know, I see no evidence of that." But that's not saying I don't believe it's possible. Right. Um, and and people took that, you know, people weren't. I guess the general public wasn't smart enough to see through that. So I, I took a lot of anger for a little while. And I actually, yeah, absolutely, Sean. <laughs> absolutely. And you're right, Sean. I was at the airport. Um, and, and it took a lot. And like I said, it, I did not, I couldn't talk about it Sunday night when I did the show or Monday when I did the show. But when I was free and clear Tuesday, I could say, hey, this is what went on, which I thought was kind of weird. But I still hadn't gotten what the motive was. I didn't have any physical evidence. But eventually, I got all that by February, by, by the second week of February. And what I also did was I got the 89-page police report, too, from that whole fiasco. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, mm. Okay. Chat's busy over here. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Um, so, yeah. So, but, but people are going to understand is that that's the fair-mindedness person I am. Like, I, I'm not going to go say a person's a hoaxer. Uh, yeah, how you absolutely were. Yep, they were planning a rescue mission for Muncie, but I got my I got myself extricated out of there thanks to a yeah. uh, good friend John Cartwright got me out of there. So, <laughs> um, got me a plane ticket to get out out of Dodge, and I did. I'm eternally grateful for it for that. But um, but yeah, um, 
I, I just, it, it, it's kind of the responsibility of thing. When I started squatchdetective.com years ago, I wanted it to be like a news outlet almost. Yeah. And it, it turned into more. It turned into a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But, you know, the whole idea of, to me is, is I still have this romantic, this romantic idea of, uh, of, um, you know, journalism, you do it right. You yeah. Know? Um, and yeah, it's hard to let your bias get in there. Cause I'm pro Bigfoot. I'm uh, a, an anti kill Bigfoot, but that doesn't mean I, 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 I hate the, the pro kill folks. I understand why they're doing it. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I don't agree with it. I won't do it. I'm not them. Right. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose sleep or, or lose friends because they think th differently than me. Yeah. Um, too many times. And, you know, if, if anything, we, we've seen this microchasm, what's going now in the world. We've seen this microchasm in the Bigfoot community for a long time. Yeah. That's right. I forgot that nickname. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Rick said he said yeah. some four chain interactions on my farm. So no, no, actually, actually, that, that's fine, Rick. Rick, if you want to, if you want to give me a shout out uh, later on on PM on um, on Facebook, please do, and uh, we can set up a conversation and, uh, and we'll get you on the show. Um, because we, we'd like to hear about that. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, you know, so you you have to definitely put. You got to, as much as I wanted to say, you know, at the end, of it, I was so pissed off that when I was, I was pissed off when that whole thing was fake. I knew all the lies that were being told, but just because somebody is a liar doesn't make them a hoaxer. Um, you know, uh, and, and people kind of go, what? Uh, and it's kind of like the, the rule of, of, you know, investigation one-on-one. Um, like if, if you're investigating a murder, and you find out, you know, you're, you're investigating the murder of a dead girl and the husband just so happened to be having an affair. Okay. A cheater does not make a murderer. Mm -hmm. So there's still that possibility that it's somebody other than the husband. Right. And you, you have to keep that in mind because more, there's a lot of times it's not the husband. You know, most of the time it is, but there's a lot of times it wasn't. Yeah. So, um, uh, you knew prior. Uh, so you know, what I'm saying is, is that I had reported it was a hoax on Monday, which I was the first outlet to do that it was on Monday night on the show. It actually broke before the uh, actual news did to the world that it was a hoax. Yeah. Um, I knew some other stuff that was going on behind the scenes that were very shady to me. Still didn't have the evidence in hand to say whether or not, but by the time I got out of there, um, that night I had gotten a call that verified that the e DNA email in that whole thing had been altered. And I got one of those altered DNA emails. So that's why there was a lot of confusion. Um, but that was to me that led me to say, hey, uh, I, I have very strong suspicions now that he's involved because the email he sent to me was manipulated right. so and it, it, from the original scientist that did the dna testing so to me that was saying he was trying to sucker everybody into getting there and uh, if you can do that you could do other stuff so that was that, that was really the the only thing i really knew at, at that that point uh that i didn't release was the the attempt at trying to cover it up yeah. so uh and yes an opinion can be a gut feeling but um um yeah, and, and actually, yeah, uh, Sean says Steve called me Saturday night, uh, called me Saturday night previous. Yeah, because by that time, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Sean's right. People don't understand how deep I went in that. Um, I was there. I was at ground zero, but I was being watched and, yeah. you know, uh, that, that was my only source of food. My only source, well, I hey. didn't exactly know where I was. Right. And, and, and um, Here's the deal. Okay, Steve had to wait until he got out of there 
before he could announce something. Okay. <laughs> well, because, I, I, what I announced was the attempt at trying to cover up the right, hoax. Right, right. Right. That was the only thing that happened that I didn't say on Monday. He and, was in the he was in the lion's den at yeah. that point. Okay, mm -hmm. and we're talking about something a situation that could be like multi million dollar deal that uh, you know. That, that could have been very dangerous. As a matter of fact, I believe it was very dangerous for Steve in that situation. Uh, yeah, well, it was very tenuous because a lot of people didn't know that I had went to the, the cabin, uh, the farmhouse. Yeah. Everybody was in the garage, stationed in the garage. And I went into the farmhouse, the kitchen, to do the show. Right. And within a minute of the show going on the air, I had one of the Biscardi team in there right behind me, like yeah. almost monitoring, like, like getting ready to cut me off if I needed to be cut off. I'm, I'm not really sure why that was, what was going on. Right. So, um, and absolutely Rick, I'd love to have you on talk about some of your town stuff. That'd be really cool. We love doing that. So shoot yeah. me your contact info on my, uh, my Facebook PM will talk and we'll, we'll uh, set something up for that. That's always wonderful. I love when people come forward and say, hey, you know, I've got some stuff I want to talk about. Okay, well, let's, let's connect. We'll talk about it and see if we can get you that, out. That's what we do. <laughs> but, yeah, it was it was a, a tenuous time, and, and people didn't understand why I was so quiet afterwards and why I didn't want to talk. Uh, I remember people were pressuring me to go on shows and even friends, and I, I wouldn't do it because I knew I was still in the middle of it. People didn't understand that, and yeah. I couldn't say nothing at that point to anybody because – it was that sensitive. I was on the verge of getting what I got. And that turned out to be the book 50 large. Yeah. It, all the stuff uh, from the police. Well, the police report was coming, but like the freezer receipt, <laughs> the freezer receipt yeah. was huge because that was the night that proved that Biscardi had to have seen it the way it was. Right. right. So. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Odd. He saw, he knew. <laughs> yeah that's true and you know what and and uh yeah paul vela good old paul vela he passed away several years ago but you know the funny thing is is uh, i remember maybe in a year after that a year or two after that paul vela sent me a huge apology and uh said you know I, i'm really sorry i've been brash with you and blah 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 and i realize now you know and i accepted it i you know skin off my back you know you apologize and i'm good with that I'm, I'm a very forgiving person, apparently to a fault to some people, but, um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, Paul was one of the good guys, although he was really trying to dig in and, and try to figure out what was going on and see if anybody was being cantankerous. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they were trying to drag everybody into this. There was a certain group that was like trying to do all this investigation that, you know, what was my role in it? Well, all of a sudden, by March of 2009, some six months later, seven months later, um, boom, there's the radio show. Boom, spill everything out. Here's what it is. <laughs> we need tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I survived the Bigfoot Oak. <laughs> we, we, sur we survived the Bigfoot Flap of 2008. <laughs> And, and that's how, and good God, that was 12 years ago. So, I mean, that's ancient history in the Bigfoot world. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you ask any of us, it, it was, when, when it was all over, you were like, wow, <laughs> it, it really turned things because had I not stood up for the truth, yeah, uh, that bullshit could still be floating around today. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Um, I, I believe, I believe that uh, with everything that I am. That would have still been going on today. Yeah, I mean, they were planning on trying to get everybody to sign NDAs and letting them say, and make up a cover story that the, the right. boys felt they were getting too much publicity, so they took the body back to Georgia, and they were right. going to disappear with their money, and that was going to be the end of it. And then the, anybody else would have sent an NDA and said, oh, I can't talk because of an NDA, and I said, bullshit. Yeah. I'm not going to cover a, a hoax up with another hoax. Right. bullshit and um i was the only one to stand for that and of course I, I will always say this that jc johnson and leonard dan jc johnson rest his soul was not on the property when that was being discussed yeah 
Oh, and JC came back, so I wouldn't have stood for that either. And I go, I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, JC was a good man. Well, um, see, my friend, what it's called is integrity. And well, uh, I, I cannot tell you how proud I was of you. <laughs> uh, and, um, and you know, the thing is, too, is my father always said, you're only, you're only born with one. You know, and I remember that son of a bitch, Biscardi on the phone, part of my French, um, saying on the phone, you know, there's a story here, and we can all make money on this if nobody goes cowboy. And I knew who that was directed to. Yeah. So after that was said, I merely went around to the back of the building, put my fucking spurs on, got my... <laughs> Got my 10 gallon hat on, put my chaps on, my assless chaps on, and I walked out and I went cowboy. <laughs> he put his spurs on and saddled up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, JC and Leonard did get fed up with him, and that was because of that event. <laughs> yeah, Keith. Um, yeah. Uh, That's true. Yeah, yeah. very true. Um, they did not. I remember Leonard going. Just sitting there, and it was a hot day. I remember because it was August, and I remember Leonard going, "Yeah, this is some bad juju." Yeah, you know, Leonard. I oh, love Leonard, and uh, I get to connect with him sometimes. And um, but yeah, it's that was that was quite an incredible time. And uh, if anybody actually wants to know the true story, of that uh, you know, I could go on and talk about that all night. That that's a show in itself, but. Um, uh, it, I did write a book on a 50 large. It's actually over 300 pages. <laughs> 50 large. Yeah. And, it, uh, it, it, you get and, a whole deal, whole scene, yeah. whole fight, whole tour through the inside. <laughs> David, I talked about assless chat yeah. today. I can't even see that. <laughs> and the second time that's been said tonight. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but geez, I, I really think that um, you know over over the years, um, that made me tough. Um, you know, I'd been doing research at that point in time, ten years, nine years, ten years now. Uh, I think oh, in ninety eight, two thousand eight, yeah, ten years at that point, and I really didn't come on. Uh, the, the world, the public scene until about 2006, 2005, 2006, I started becoming a little more nationally known. Um, and I was like, wow, that was, I really thought that, you know, that was a quick ride, but everybody's going to bash me because of this. And people were saying like the craziest, I was getting emails from people saying, oh, well, how much money did you make on your website for clicking onto your website? Dude, I, I don't get paid to, for somebody to click onto my website. Never have. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, um, Ten you know. billion people could have viewed your website, and Steve wouldn't have made a nickel. Well, actually, he would have probably been charged more for bandwidth. <laughs> yeah, probably. And I, I think, I think I did have a, like a quarter million views on my website. Now, yeah. Keith Worley asked. There was a rumor going around that he sold the suit for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so there's a question we can answer very well there. Um, yeah, I think I can't remember it, but I, I know where you. I know where you're going. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, the suit was put up for sale. Strangely, I think in. Uh, Towards the end of October 2008, October 2008, somewhere in there. And uh, it actually came across the police uh, police attention. And uh, they even make note that Biscardi lied to them about it. <laughs> they said, well, Biscardi denied he knew anything about it, but then later made reference to it, saying that he knew it was, it was, gonna, it was selling for over $250,000. So what happened was is that the auction was held by Joshua P. Warren, um, as you've seen, probably him at the time he was a podcaster with paranormal stuff. He did a call a show called Stranger Than Strange or something like that. He, uh, um, so he had uh, uh, Joshua P. I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the chat a little bit. So Joshua P. Warren actually put it up for auction. 
Uh, it, it, it ended with a sale for allegedly for 250000 or 254000 dollars but the sale never went through because the person right. belched on it or wasn't really being serious about it. Right. So that caused all kinds of kerfuffle. Um, I, I remember it, it sold for a big number, but the sale didn't go through. The guy, whoever bought it, didn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> that is that and asbestos underwear is bound to make you tough. Sure is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite terms, <laughs> asbestos underwear. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that that the, the suit never got sold, and everybody said, "Well, where's the suit? Where's the suit?" Well, I know where the suit is. I know where it's been. <laughs> At the time, it was in it was in Kentucky. Um, last I knew, it was uh, it was uh, T.J. Biscardi that had the suit, and he was the one who actually put it up for sale because he was. Allegedly, the, the story was that he was pissed off that, you know, everybody got the shaft on this. Um, and that was that. But, um, yeah, it, it was a time where I, I actually sent a cease and desist to Biscardi himself to stop contacting me. Uh, I did that in September of 2008. And, of course, October, he tries calling me. So I reminded him that I asked for a cease and desist. Now, if I have to make it legal, I will. And um, that, that was that. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's the story of the, the hoax. I mean, I got the 89 p play, page police report and I think it was the sale of that suit that caused the police department and Biscardi's lie to say, Hey, we're out. We're done with this. We're closing it. So, so I think that, that, that was what really closed it down was the actual sale of the suit, uh, the criminal investigation. Of course, there was a big, uh, there was a big, um, dispute between the investor and Biscardi, whereas Biscardi said that he, oh, I forget what it was. Um, uh, the investor said he lent Mo Biscardi the money and Biscardi was saying, no, uh, I lent him the money based if it was real. So, um, hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, so what, what ended up happening was, is that Biscardi was supposed to be the one who was the complainant and he never came forward to do any kind of complaint whatsoever. And, uh, you know, obviously that was even more to the fact that he was involved in it. Right. Right. So, so to me, it was like, okay, there's more proof that he was involved. He wouldn't sign. In fact, he was the only one out of anybody with the exception of myself. Cause I was never asked to write a statement. Bill let the investor wrote a statement. Uh, Bob Schmalz bag, the vice president of the SFBI wrote a TJ Biscardi wrote a, 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 a statement. Uh, so the three people that belong to searching for Bigfoot wrote statements, but Biscardi took the words that were kind of manipulated a bit by, by Bob Schmalz back um, and said, this is what happened. And he sent it to police. That was the, the nothing about his pre meetings with them, nothing about what they said to him, nothing at all. Mm. You know, like nothing that, you know, all on, on such and such date, I met with them at the hotel and this is what they said to me and blah, 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 blah. And, um, he didn't mention, uh, buying a freezer or anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it was really nothing there. So as it turns out, and that's the reason why it never, and it's kind of funny because the Sacramento B called me <clears throat> years ago about, about, and this was probably like 2009, 2010, they actually asked him about the hoax. And then they came to me and said, well, Mr. Biscardi <coughs> said, um, you know, he's planning a lawsuit with them, blah, 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 blah. I was like, give me one second. And I looked up the county and, you know, there's no lawsuits. I go, there's no lawsuits. <laughs> he's lying. <laughs> he's lying. I said, just check your sources. And the next day they say, well, the, the, the Sacramento Bee could find no lawsuits that Scarty claims that. <laughs> oh, man. You know, but there's been so much over the years, there's been so much charlatanism. It's actually gotten worse and nastier. Like I remember the good old days. You used to out a hoaxer. They used to go away. Now you got people like Kat Hansen and they, they, you know, just keep coming back, coming back, coming back. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You know, it took a long time to beat Dyer to go away, but it took a couple of times. So, but anyway, uh, I think we can wrap for the night. So, um, what do you think, Chris? We've really had a busy chat room going tonight. I we mean, do. wow. Boom, boom, boom. 
They're having a good old time in there. <laughs> on Facebook, on YouTube, yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. So, <laughs> I just missed that one. That 200, was that payable in Snapple? <laughs> yeah. Here comes the 20 truckloads. Here they come. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's been fun. Um, and, and Mr. Chef, give me a call. I, I'd love to, uh, or, you know, hit me up on Facebook. And yeah. uh, cause I'd love to, to get you on, but this has been a heck of a fun show. A little trip down memory lane as it turned out to be. Yeah. And I'm glad folks stuck in for it. <laughs> um, you know, and in some of these hooker shows people love too. So, um, I'm sure there was people that came by and said, well, I wonder who he's talking about. He's talking about me. Is he talking about me. Is he talking about me. Hey, is he talking about me? No, nope. Okay. It's all done. <laughs> But anyway, uh, it's been a fun night. And uh, I got to say, it's, you know, I took the air conditioners out last week, so <laughs> it's a little bit warm. Um, uh, yeah, uh, really. I mean, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, at night it's been getting cool here, but it seems like the house is still warm inside. I don't know what that is. Okay, there goes my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's official. The show's officially over now. <laughs> the dog has spoken. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, the one thing I don't like to do is keep rambling on, and, and we, we've hit all our points tonight, and we've had a great discussion, a little off discussion on stuff. So, and, and just remember the whole thing, the whole, a lot of the stuff, and the reason why I talk about hoaxers every once in a while because number one, like this particular, is very relevant because of what's being said, and you can see the manipulation, as I stated earlier, and right. that gets me a little agitated. I don't like manipulators. Because manipulators can be a bit of a control freak, and I don't even know if that's her issue. But anyway, whatever it is, you know, I, I would hope she would get some psychological help. Yeah, well, he's uh, uh, that's a whole nother story. Yeah, that's a that's, whole nother. That's story. another. That's another show. <laughs> hey, and Craig Worthington said he talked to Leonard a few days ago, so I'm gonna have to. Oh. I'll keep so, Dan's doing all right. Well, uh, yeah, because, you know, I haven't really seen much from Johnson lately. Um, just the same of the same. And if there's anything, and I've talked about him before in the past, too, is, you know, it's a cult. You know, Cat hmm. Hansen, not so much. Um, Linda Newton Perry, not so much. Uh, you know, even Janice Carter. You get a few supporters. That doesn't mean it's a cult. But when you start, you know, all sitting there communing and, you know, uh, everybody getting in a circle and preparing for the for the arrival of the, uh, you know, uh, Council of 13 or the Council of 12 and, and the High Counselor Zorth with the Ambassador, Dr. Johnson. Um, yeah, that's a cult. <laughs> so there I've talked about it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, and if you all believe that, well, I got a bridge for you to sell. It's in Brooklyn. And I'll just, hey, all I have to do is go to PayPal and get it for $59.99. That bridge can be yours. Sign up today. <laughs> now, I'll probably get an infraction from YouTube about doing that. Hey, he's trying to sell the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> You're going to get hit on YouTube. <laughs> uh, Oh man! Uh, so, but anyhow, uh, Chris, you got anything to add for tonight? Yeah, uh, well, I just want to thank everybody. We appreciate uh, all the listeners and and uh, all our chat room folks. And it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, remind everybody, uh, all of our, our listeners on uh, YouTube, please, you know, uh, hit the like, subscribe, ring the bell, uh, follow us share uh leave a comment you know uh we appreciate it. it it helps activate more features for the account and we appreciate you support the channel that's and right. with that back to you steve all right folks on behalf of everybody here on squatch dtv we will be back here next sunday night at 9 p.m eastern i am your host steve coles and i want to wish everybody out there along with me and chris bennett we want to wish everybody a great week ahead a healthy week a happy week god bless and most of all folks keep on squatching we will adjust the sound so we don't blow, blow you up but we will catch you again 9 p.m next week squatch dtv peace out
Sports. You've been watching Squatch D TV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.